Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're taking a look at the uh, second trailer that's just been released for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. I was uh, mowing my lawn and this trailer dropped so I didn't see it for an hour after release so I'm real upset about that but I'm, I'm excited to go through it now. I watched it once on their on their page. I'm gonna go through it again here. Just kind of first impressions real raw. Gonna break it down talk about what we're seeing. Uh, talk about anything new that we see so like I said I've seen it once so this isn't my first reaction to it but I did see a lot of stuff going on it was it was fast i'm probably gonna have to do quite a bit of uh quite a lot of pausing because uh there was just a lot going on so let's just uh get into it it's called the saints and sinners trailer and so i feel like we're leaning heavily into well two different things one it feels like this game is definitely building towards the Husai wars just because the time period that both games are set in how we're leading up to it and all the conflict between you know the, the papal schism has already been brought up the church Venceslas the idol and uh, Sigismund's conflict and a lot of things all go together into the Husite wars and it feels like that's just where we're headed here uh, not to mention some rumors about uh, a character that we are familiar with in the game or maybe not but maybe it's like uh, kind of alluding to it being uh, Jan Jishka who is a influential member in the uh, in the Husite conflict so very interesting stuff going on here and it's just so much going on at once so let's just dive in Peggy 18 the best laid plans of men don't always come to fruition Man. All right, so we're seeing at least some level of large-scale conflict here. We can see a lot of horses and corpses in this uh, ditch here being buried over. Now, of course, this could be just conflict related to uh, Mark Vart von Aulitz, who we've already seen in the trailers, and we know is going to be at least at some level a antagonist in this game, uh, leading a army against what appears to be Trotsky Castle in the shots that we've already seen from the previous trailer. So this could just be related to that, or again, considering that this narration side Sounds like it's being done by Father Godwin, and the character that we're looking at, at least in the shots that we've seen so far in this trailer, are clearly not Hans Kapan or Henry, so it's likely that it's Godwin. This could be related to the Hussite conflict. Poses. But God disposes. I mean, he just said, uh, man proposes, God disposes. That's uh, the a, a different way to say uh, man plans and then God, or uh, man makes plans and then God laughs. Uh, essentially, even the best laid plans, intentions, strategies, all that sort of stuff, you can do that, but they will oftentimes not go as you had planned. So uh, that could be taken into be that could be taken to mean lots of different things. Obviously, that could just be about the specific situation here, but it could be about the Hussite conflict because uh, there's obviously a lot of different sides and I made some videos going into the history of the Hussite Wars on my history channel, Parry This, so I recommend checking them out if you're not familiar with the conflict. But suffice it to say, there are a lot of different parties involved in the Hussite Wars and it may have started out as a genuine desire for religious reform for the better and what it turned into was a bunch of different factions squabbling over power and a lot of issues of corruption and wealth and debauchery and all sorts of things getting mashed in uh, and then conflicting with each other so uh, that could be what he's referring to there with uh, you know man plans and God laughs and then boots you right in the bowls I'm not uh, that guy there doesn't look familiar to me he does have a very high definition face uh, at least detail wise compared to a lot of people in the game uh, or that we've seen so far so maybe this is a random guy and they're just using it to kind of show you know a little bit of conflict here or maybe this guy's important my feeling is he's probably important because this is not a long trailer every shot seems to be to establish something so my guess would be that this guy is somebody maybe i'm not recognizing and it's obvious if you know who this guy's supposed to be or i just missed something clear let me know down in the comment section below but uh he's clearly being thrown out and beaten up by some i'm not sure what to call these guys they're not wearing anything signifying that they're men at arms could just be militia townsfolk bandits i don't know hard to say these two now we've got Henry and Hans rolling up with uh, what looks like Mutt riding alongside them. Uh, interestingly, it looks like Pebbles that Henry's riding. Could just be a coincidence, but it looks like Pebbles. I would hope that we don't start the game out with Pebbles. Hopefully, I mean, who knows? If there's some sort of a save import, hopefully I can ride in on Shadow Mirror or something, but uh, that looks like Pebbles. You young fellas, I need to... There's Godwin, or at least it looks like Godwin. Find them. One's a smart-ass smith. 
All right, Henry d- being described as a smith despite it having done literally no smithing in the first game is definitely interesting. I'm I we've now had it confirmed that smithing is going to be a bigger part of what Henry does in this game. I hope that that's done well in an entertaining manner. I love the existing mini games that already exist from the first one like the lock picking I got used to and then I started liking it. The alchemy is obviously more involved. I'm assuming that if they add a smithing system, it's going to be more in line with the alchemy system like it won't just be a slight movement that you do it'll there will be a right way and a wrong way and uh you can fail in what you're doing uh so cool to see henry smithing again and interesting to hear him referred to as a smart ass smith and the others are blue-blooded fledgling you behave like a spoiled brat how dare you speak all right well seeing that that's funny so describing hans kapan as a uh, blue-blooded fledgling is very very funny for one thing historically speaking at this time uh, hans kapan would have been what like 15 years old so he's depicted in the first game as being like an adult he, he seems like he's an adult and uh, is given that sort of responsibility and just overall stature wise him and henry maybe they're actually going to show that he's quite young still it's interesting seeing him in the stocks maybe these people who put him in the stocks don't know who he is i would be or maybe this is done by mark fart von outlets or something i would struggle to believe that a lord of a somewhat large and important uh fief like the retay fief would be treated this way by anyone whose authority is less than a margrave like that's interesting but maybe they're incognito i don't know gentlemen praise me there's uh I, i i'll have to rewind a little bit so I don't step on this too much, but I'm fairly certain that that's Godwin. A lot of people are talking about it like it definitely is. For me, it looks different enough and sounds different enough that maybe it's not. I've heard some people saying this is Jan Jishka. I'm not sure. To me, I'm just in my head every time I see the character that looks roughly like this. I've been I've been saying in my head Father Godwin, but uh, let me let me rewind a little bit so he can get his line out. I'm saying. You behave like a spoiled brat. How dare you speak... Gentlemen, praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father. Well, and he appeared to be riding with them, uh, him again there. Here we have, that's an interesting frame to freeze on because it makes wh- what I assume is Hans Kapan's face look very weird and not much like him. And what looks like Henry, but very skinny and young. I'm, I'm interested to see what's going on with this trailer because it feels like we're getting... Uh, shots from various different stages of development throughout the game because this here is relatively low resolution this guy here i have no idea who that is kind of looks like radzig but 20 years younger than we've seen him so maybe a i don't know relation of some sort i like the uh the haircut i i say that sarcastically because i definitely don't like it but historically speaking it's interesting and accurate to the time period and location uh Clearly at some sort of a party. I remember in the first trailer I had uh, theorized that this might be a wedding. I still think that that's likely. There are many sinners. Well, we had some uh, dancing nudity, it looked like, in that last one. Oh no, she's wearing some sort of a shift, so Henry might be naked, or at least uh, topless, but she's got some sort of a dress on and a scary looking face. Many sinners in this world. I like that. Looks like we've got uh, a bathhouse and this guy is, uh, what do you call it, a gondolier? <laughs> That's what he's acting as. And then, of course, we've got some action going on there. She seems to be en- enjoying it. Definitely more adult content in, uh, or from what we've seen in the second game than in the first game. Well, okay, there we got a shot at some pick, uh, some lock picking. And Henry in sort of a roguish outfit. Uh, I wonder if the the mechanic will have changed for lockpicking. I know a lot of people uh, did not like it all that much in the first game. Now, for me, when I was playing Kingdom Come Deliverance, the first couple playthroughs I did were on the PS4. Oops, accidentally skipped back to that. Uh, we're on the PS4, and it was not as good on the controller. But once I switched over to PC, I found the lockpicking system to be very intuitive and easy to use with mouse and keyboard. So this could be different because we're not seeing any sort of a overlay maybe they have it turned off maybe this is a cutscene. but it's interesting to see henry in that sort of roguish sneaky outfit uh pick and locks but in the end we all... there that looked like he picked up a dagger Thanks your judgment for what... all right well i what from what i i can assume from there uh we have appeared to pick up a dagger by a smithing area and then in our next shot, we are assassinating a, what looks like a man-at-arms. And then in the following shot, we are being whipped, flogged. Not sure what the exact distinction is there, but at a pillory. So, interesting. 
Uh, I'm assuming these are disconnected because I don't think uh, if he got caught red-handed murdering someone, I don't think you'd just get 30 lashes. <laughs> Pretty sure you'd probably get executed, uh, depending on your status. And uh, as we've been described as a smart-ass uh, blacksmith so far, I'm assuming our status is not Lord. For what we should have done. Oh, she was busty. So we've got uh, Henry's new buxom wench. I would guess, who I will assume is not Teresa because she doesn't look anything like Teresa. Uh, actually, as far as appearances go, one of the graphical fidelity, one of the best looking ones so far in the, in the, the from what we've seen so far from any of these trailers. A lot of detail, so I'm guessing she's somewhat of an important character. Done. There we've got uh, this, again, I'm going to assume this is Trotsky Castle, is this crest. So we've got uh, a bloody man-at-arms being dragged up. This could be post-siege or something, uh, hard to say. I'm enjoying the amount of gore, though. It's very uh, encouraging to see how much effort's being put into that. But lacked the courage to do. The last time I ran away, I lost everything. All right, so there we had a shot from the first game again, the sacking of Scalitz. Mark Vart von Aulitz again being the center of attention there. Here we have the shot that I think a lot of people are are talking about, or at least that I've I've seen some people talking about. Again, there's been some specula uh, speculation about Jan Jishka. This is another character that people are suggesting. I fully believe this is Father Godwin. Like I said, I don't have any a reason to believe not because it sounds like him, so I assume it's the same voice actor, uh, and it would be confusing to just do a character switch. And Warhorse has not just persuaded any of the people that have been calling him Father Godwin. So I think it's safe to assume that. Uh, this, I believe, does look significantly more like Jan Jishka than other characters that we've pointed out so far. I seem to remember a mustache. Uh, although I do also seem to remember him only having one eye. So that's something. I, I do really like the look of Henry's armor here. I love the graphical fidelity. I love, as I've said before, the quaff on top of the armor instead of underneath. And the brigandine looks significantly better than the brigandines in the first game did. I'm never gonna run from that fucker again. Kiss our asses! God. Is this retribution for my sins? Okay, well, so that was a good shot. Well, A, <laughs> Hans yelling that out at Mark Van Ellitz is interesting, and uh, I'm sure that will lead into the siege that we're going to see in a couple seconds here. That's a really cool shield. I hope that we get uh, some cool-looking shields like that in the game, because that is an awesome-looking shield. Then we get Mark Van Ellitz rise, uh, raising up his visor, another thing that I hope we get plenty of in the game. And then after that, I like the smile that we see on our presumptive uh, Zizka here. <laughs> he clearly approves of Hans Kapan yelling that, and then Father Godwin not being so approving. Get some more mounted archery there. So in the first game, mounted archery was a thing that you could do, but I don't know if a lot of people out there have tried it. It was not very easy. I basically gave up on the practice very, very early. I don't really do it. Uh, hopefully in the second game, it's more usable. Guy had a fun floppy looking cloth hat. There we see our hand cannon being used, uh, lit in combat, while being attacked by uh, what looks like seven men at arms. I don't know that I would, I mean, obviously if you have it in your hand loaded and ready, using it to take out one of them would be great, but I, I don't like my odds against the other six. Oh, there we have a cumin. So still, I mean, I believe we saw shots of people wearing cumin looking armor in the first trailer. So if it wasn't already confirmed, it definitely is now. That was a pretty cool sword fighting technique. Looked very historically authentic. You can see he goes in after having broken through his guard. He comes up to bring it up the top, switches one hand over so he can get more leverage on the blade and to try to poke down through the mail that he's wearing. So that is a, a very good move. I like that we can see up into there. It'd be really cool if we had a feature in this game to uh, do what was oftentimes done in combat where you'd be grappling it up close and you could get under the helmet and slide up and stab him with a dagger. That'd be really cool. Saw a drawbridge in action. Love drawbridges. Gotta call that out whenever you can. One thing with medieval media is the underutilization of drawbridges as one of the absolute best defensive fortifications that you could build onto pretty much anything. So I love seeing that. All right, plenty of siege mechanics here. Another thing that got me particularly excited about this, we we're seeing a lot of stuff in these couple shots. So here's Markvart von Aulitz tro uh, Aulitz's troops attacking. Then we get a murder hole shot where presumably Henry is throwing a large rock down, clobbering that guy in the head. Love that. 
absolutely love that we're using a murder hall here and what appears to be the inner door of a gatehouse so they've clearly already gotten through the outer door uh here we've got using a volge it looks like to push down or volge to push down a ladder love that so lots of siege mechanics. We also have quite a few fortifications out there. You can see we've got people with pavis shields standing up or pavis shields and uh, probably either using hand cannons or crossbows to shoot at us. So it'll be interesting to see if like we're actually in danger of being hit by projectiles up here. Uh, the first game didn't have a whole lot of that going on. Winding our crossbow. So in the first trailer, we saw a crossbow being cocked by hand, a smaller one on horseback. Here we have a full-size crossbow being wound up. So that's uh, interesting. We're seeing that we at least have two variants. That's a pretty cool headshot. I like that the physics of it didn't throw the guy backwards. Now, obviously, you'd be hit with a, a decent amount of force. But uh, realistically, even, like from that range, that's most likely what would happen. Maybe you'd ragdoll a little bit more, but uh, that's pretty cool. Get more cavalry shots. That's a decent sized armed group. If this is a cutscene, that wouldn't be anything new. But if this is some sort of in-game footage, or if we're going to have that many opponents on the field at once, that is significantly more than we ever got in the first game. Come on! All right, we see Mutt attacking there. Quite a bit of mounted combat going on here. That is a really cool looking saddle there. So we're getting cooler looking saddles, clearly. task. All right, and we're seeing a lot more gameplay. So it, the first trailer was uh, a lot of cutscenes, a lot of pre-generated stuff, a little bit of gameplay sparse throughout. This trailer all pretty much appears to be like there's a little bit that I would say looks more like a cutscene, but a lot of this looks like gameplay. So we're seeing direct combat. All of this, not that, but all of this looked like combat uh, or uh, gameplay. So this doesn't look like it's pre-generated. This looks like gameplay. So Ooh, that's a cool shield too. Man, I am loving the amount of variety that we're seeing in this. It's It looks like it's going to be so much better, more bright and vibrant and varied than the first game. I'm very excited about that. Not to mention, again, we see we have a helmet on in combat. Visor's up. It's awesome. To the fucking task. That guy kind of looked... No... I was going to say, that guy sta that Henry was talking to there. I'm not sure. There's been three or four unique enough faces in this trailer that I'm sure they're probably named characters. And this is another one that looks like it, but he doesn't look enough like any of the other people that we've seen so far. So, I mean, it would be awesome if the game introduces a bunch more named characters, because obviously that amount of variety is is more fun. Uh, this could be Sebastian Von Berg, for all I know. But uh, I'm not sure who it is. They keep saying, to the task. I wonder if that has any sort of historical significance. All right, I'm not finding anything in a cursory Google search that tells me anything about To The Task. So I would just assume this has to be some sort of an expression that they're saying in the game uh, for, you know, let's get done what we got to get done. But uh, they're repeating it a bunch here, so that's interesting. The fucking task. So, and that brings us to the end. So, very interesting. Uh, lots of stuff to see in there. Like I said, kind of jam-packed full of just quick shots of a bunch of different stuff. We saw a bunch of siege mechanics. That's probably, out of everything in this trailer, that's probably what I'm most excited for because it's probably the biggest shift in what we saw from the first trailer to this one. But I'm also loving all of the consequences, all the reputation stuff that's being implied in here. Uh, I'm guessing that based on the story so far, or at least maybe early story in the game, is going to be, we already knew it was going to be very Henry and Hans heavy. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of Godwin in this trailer than we saw in the previous trailer, so I'm guessing maybe he'll also be some sort of a driving force. It'll be interesting to see how that happens, because he was not in the party leaving the Rite Fief, but at the beginning of this trailer, it looked like he was looking for them, so maybe he follows after them. Whatever the case may be, interesting to see him uh, added into here, and probably a good choice, considering I know me personally, he was one of my favorite characters from the first game, and so I think that resonated with a lot of people. Interesting trailer. I mean, we're probably going to see more at the uh, Summer Games Fest that's later today, uh, in about two hours from where I live. Uh, it'll probably be going off. Maybe we'll see more in that, but as of right now, very cool. Excited that this trailer came out. Still just says coming 2024, wishlist now. Has it listed as PC, Xbox Series X and S, and PS5? Doesn't specifically say Steam or anything. I currently have it wishlisted on Steam, so I know it's at least currently available on Steam. I would assume also the Epic Game Store, um, because, you know, Deep Silver. But, yeah, uh, I'm hoping for a release date today. It didn't come in this trailer. I didn't see anything in this trailer that gave it away, other than the fact that they're still saying coming 2024. Hopefully, 
Summer Games Fest, uh, the whatever reveal they do in that will have release date. But uh, as of right now, just very excited to see more of the game. Awesome stuff. If I missed anything or got anything wrong or anything like that, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll probably watch this trailer another 10 times in the next day or two. Uh, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.